March 28, 2018, the People's Republic of Parkistopia. A new nation with big plans has entered the world, but on this day the winds of fate have changed, and two nations come together under one alliance. An alliance that would soon shape the world stage and change the course of history forever. Today was the official declaration of friendship between the Empire of Eternia and the People's Republic of Parkistopia. Forever may they reign. Hey everybody, this is AP, and today I'm here with General Secretary Brzezette, and we are in the People's Republic of Parkistopia. Hello everyone. Now, I'm sure you guys don't know anything about me, because Parkistopia isn't really a well-known micronation, but I actually found AP's a micronation based off of um, the tags of one of my videos on my uh, secondary channel, which is Parkistopia Official. Um, I saw one of his videos and I sent one of my advisors to uh, comment and um, so now we found out that uh, we're not that far from each other and so we've met up for a diplomatic discussion on trade amongst other things and I'll give a little short tour. Alright so first off we're going to go over here. Now Park Estopia is in a very early stage of development. Uh, we don't have much so far. The <laughs> Micronation is only a couple months old. <laughs> Um, so right over here we have the flagpole and ceremonially um, for special occasions I usually prop up uh, a couple flags for certain occasions which are right there. Um, now I just kind of used um, what I had at hand for, um, for today's little celebration and they're being held by uh, barbells which I'm going to eventually change that but we live in the uh, in very uh, in the very deep south of the state of Alabama uh, where the population is overwhelmingly conservative and uh, because of the Cold War they don't take too kindly uh, to anything to do with the Soviet Union or North Korea and earlier I had a little um, panic attack because a couple of times uh, these flags have somehow escaped the grass with the barbells and <laughs> flipped over to the other side of the fence for the people of the Mexican restaurant across the sea. Um, so I rather quickly assess the situation. But um, we're going to move on to the, what this spot will eventually be right here. This will eventually be a farm. Uh, we're, uh, we have a specific agriculture uh, kind of deal going on. Um, where during the winter we're going to plant potatoes um, during the summer we're going to plant tomatoes and in the um, spring we're going to plant cabbage uh, so we have a sort of year-round crop uh, going about just to be a bit more uh, self-reliant on certain things and um, as we go to the other side of our nation uh, we have our uh, nation's lake, which as of right now has yet to be officially named, but I like to call it the People's Lake. Um, we do have goldfish and koi fish um, swimming around in there, and they're doing their own little thing. This is the Independence Bell, and it's over here secluded in this corner. Uh, it's really small. And, uh, as I say, it is small and secluded, much like our nation. So it kind of fits with the whole theme. It doesn't really go along with the whole socialist, uh, communist dictatorship kind of deal. Um, but I thought it was a good way to represent what the micronation actually is. So, over here, um, we have plans for um, a building that's going to be wedged right in between these chairs and that building right there and that's going to be my office um, or propaganda news station something along those lines and um, like I said it's all in the planning stages right now and over here we have uh, this little well it's a rather large monument um, it is the monument to micronationalism and you, you just see a tree at first, but there is a small piece of driftwood 
um, right there and that represents one micronation while the rest of the tree represents the vastness of the rest of the world. So I thought that was a good way to promote micronationalism um, just in general. So um, in the front yard, which we're not going to uh, look at because it's rather barren, uh, we plan on fencing in the rest of the property uh, because we only have the backyard fenced in right now. Um, and um, in the front we plan on putting another farm uh, just for different crops. Same situation as the farm from over there that we plan on having. And we also put on, uh, we also plan on putting a uh, second or third building there just for different purposes. So over here uh, we have our last monument so far, uh, which is the monument to the national animal, which is the bearded dragon. As you can see, there is uh, a lizard in the middle of this um, assortment. And uh, this is our na uh, mascot. He is our uh, national animal. His name is Rusty, and he is a bearded dragon. We also have another one, but he's just a little baby. Um, so as of right now, the big guy is the one to represent the nation. Emperor AP and I have been making specific deals um, over our past uh, conversation for the last couple hours. And um, we've discussed trade deals among other things. And um, I'm glad to be joined in his presence today. And just like that, the birth of a friendship began. As we stood standing in front of the ceremonial banners, I couldn't help but feel awestruck knowing that a culture so different from my own, and deeply special through its own nature, had been so welcoming to me as its first diplomatic guest, and as my first international trip as emperor. It was incredibly humbling.